Well, folks, you all know how much I love women's soccer, in particular, the work of Megan Rapino. You know, it's rare that you see proof of God at work in the universe, but apparently Megan Rapino has, um, has uncovered it. So I just had to note this clip because it really is astonishing. So Megan Rapino, who is one of the most obnoxious human beings on planet Earth, rich and famous for being a female soccer star, which again, only in America could you be wealthy and famous for being a female soccer star. That's not even a profession. In any case, Megan Rapino, um, she, um, she was injured in another one of her farewell games. I thought she was gone already. When did she leave? She's mostly famous for yelling about how America is terrible and kneeling for the national anthem because she's a lesbian or some such nonsense. And um, she uh, she was injured in this latest championship that no one had heard about until she started jabbering about it. And uh, she talked about her belief in uh, that that atheism has been proved by by the bad things happening to her. Here we go. And this is a long one, although I'm, I'm going to get the Aaron Rodgers treatment, whatever that is. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be calling him or whoever did his surgery because we need to speed this up. But yeah, I thought about it a little bit. I mean, you know, I'm not a religious person or anything. And if there wasn't God, like this is proof that there isn't. This is f***ed up. Um, so yeah, it just, it's just f***ed up because like six minutes in, f***ing eat my Achilles. I mean, what the f***? Yeah, no, I mean, that that is definitely proof that, that there is no God. I mean, as, as we've all asked many, many times before, why do terrible things happen to terrible people? Why is that? That, that is certainly, that is, that is the big religious question. Why do bad things keep on happening to bad people like Megan Rapinoe? Uh, perfectly, perfectly solid disproof of God's existence right there from, uh, from that class act. A few years ago, I sent in a portrait to paint your life. The process was quick. It was easy. I loved their work so much I decided to use them again. This time around, I sent them a photo of the entire family, including the new cute squishy baby. It's a beautiful photo, and it turned out as a beautiful painting. Went right up on the wall in our den. I can't wait to send in another photo, this time for my in-laws. If you're looking for a unique gift idea, you need to check out Paint Your Life. Paint Your Life transforms your photos into a -a one-of-a-kind, beautiful hand-painted portrait by a professional artist. Upload photos to create anything you imagine. You can put yourself in a location you've always wanted to go. You can add a lost loved one to a special location to create a portrait that includes your entire family, for example. You can choose the artist, art medium, oil, acrylic, watercolor, charcoal, And they have a great selection of quality frames. Their user-friendly platform lets you order a custom-made hand-painted portrait in less than five minutes. You'll get your professional hand-painted portrait in as little as two weeks. It's awesome. It's something that only rich people used to be able to do, and now anyone can do it. This holiday season, you can give the most meaningful gift you've ever given from paintyourlife.com. No risk. If you don't love the final painting, your money is refunded, guaranteed. Right now is a limited time offer. Get 20% off your painting. That's right, 20% off plus free shipping. To get the special offer, text the word Ben to 87204. That's Ben to 87204. Paint your life and celebrate the moments that matter most. Message and data rates may apply. See terms for details. Let's talk about the October 15th tax deadline. So it already passed, right? You can look at the calendar. I know might, many of you might be dreading the stress of filing your taxes. Filing those taxes can be a long, excruciating process. But if you fail to file, it's going to get even worse. You're going to start to pile penalties on your tax debt. That's why you need to check out Tax Network USA. The team at Tax Network USA has a track record of success. They've reduced tax debts for numerous clients, totaling over a billion dollars. Whether you're looking at a $10,000 or a $1 million tax debt, they can help you with the settlement. It doesn't matter if you haven't filed in a year, five years, even a whole decade. Tax Network USA is equipped to secure the best settlement for you. Their expert attorneys and tax professionals can help resolve all tax cases, no matter how they started. Don't let tax debt control your life any longer. Take that first step toward resolving your tax issues by visiting taxnetworkusa.com slash Shapiro. That's taxnetworkusa.com slash Shapiro. Again, Tax Network USA is going to help you get out of that debt you owe to the IRS. If that starts to pile up on you, it's going to ruin your life. Save your own self by going to taxnetworkusa.com slash Shapiro. That's taxnetworkusa.com slash Shapiro today. So remember that time that Kevin McCarthy, the Speaker of the House, was ousted for no reason that anyone could really discern by Matt Gates and company? He was really bad. You remember, and, and no one could really explain why he was really bad. Supposedly, it was because he was cutting deals with Democrats and spending too much money and signing on to continuing resolutions and all the rest. Meanwhile, many of the people who had rebelled against McCarthy had voted against better versions of continuing resolutions that McCarthy was trying to negotiate. And it was all really stupid. And then we waited several weeks, like five weeks. And then finally, there was a new Speaker of the House. And the new Speaker of the House is great. I like Mike Johnson. I'm a big fan of Mike Johnson. I'm just going to point out that Mike Johnson is preparing now to pass a continuing resolution that looks exactly the same as the continuing resolutions that Kevin McCarthy was passing. Maybe, maybe more, maybe bigger, maybe bigger spending. Why? It's not because Mike Johnson is not conservative. It is because... The incentives are not aligned. The stars are not aligned. The political votes are not aligned in favor of a hardcore conservative agenda when you have a Democratic Senate and a Democratic president. 
and a slim majority of, what, eight seats in the United States Congress. And so this whole idiotic thing about let's get rid of McCarthy, we'll get somebody else, and that'll change the entire magical structure. It, it, it's changed literally nothing. According to Breitbart, the House is under new management, but is operating under business as usual as it prepares to pass a continuing resolution and once again extends spending levels and policies pushed through by then-Speaker Nancy Pelosi in last December's lame duck session. Speaker Mike Johnson is moving a laddered CR that extends current spending levels for agriculture, energy, and water, military construction, VA, and transportation HUD spending bills through January 19th, with the remaining eight bills extended through February 2nd. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer took to the Senate floor Monday afternoon to say he's pleased with Speaker Johnson for choosing not to pursue spending cuts or policy riders in the spending package. He says House Republicans have pursued a responsible measure. Then Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell also endorsed that particular plan. Now, again, this is not me ripping on Johnson. This is me pointing out that the incentives are what the incentives are. And you have been lied to by an enormous number of politicians and commentators who tell you that if you just shout pure slogans from the rooftops, then magically you can manifest reality. That if you just shout, we need lower spending over and over, you don't have to look at the vote count. You have to look at the whip tally. You don't have to look at who controls the Senate or who controls the White House. Magically, things will change. And if somebody refuses to do that, if they don't shout loud enough, if they don't make loud noises, then we just oust them. Unless it's Mike Johnson, in which case, I assume Matt Gates is going to sign on to this because Matt Gates fired his bullet and he hit Speaker McCarthy. And now there's Speaker Johnson because of Matt Gates. And there's no market improvement in the actual legislation because, of course, there is not going to be market improvement in the legislation. The constituency of the House is what the constituency of the House is. Representative Chip Roy, who's been absolutely consistent and good on this stuff, member of the Rules Committee, one of the most conservative members of the House, held a press conference Monday and he said, we got nothing. He said, Speaker Johnson continues to perpetuate the very system my constituents sent me here to oppose. They don't want me to continue spending money we don't have at $1.6 trillion spending levels, Pelosi spending levels. Other conservatives joining Roy in the opposition included Representatives Marjorie Taylor Greene, Tim Burchett, and Andrew Clyde of Georgia. While continuing spending set by Democrats, Johnson's clean CR does not include supplemental spending requested by the Biden White House that included billions in foreign aid for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, as well as a few billion for the border. It's unclear exactly how funding is going to get passed there because Joe Biden continues to insist that funding for Ukraine be connected with funding for Israel, which again is an idiotic proposal because these are two very different wars. By the way, I support continuing to fund Ukraine in its war against Russia if there is an actual endpoint and because you got to prevent Ukraine from falling to Russia. That does not mean the endpoint in that particular war is, is similar in any way, shape or form to the endpoint in Israel's war on Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Biden insists on linking the two. But the House continue again, the incentive structures just do not align. Thomas Sowell famously suggested correctly that when it comes to decision making, the problem is generally not the decision maker. The problem is generally the decision making structure. And that decision making structure means you can't expect that Mike Johnson is going to magically be able to ram through a budget cutting device. It's not going to happen. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda. <laughs> 